and what shall we have in store for you, designed to tantalize, tease, and uh, titillate the senses? What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Mike Versperl and I just got back from a two week long work trip in Las Vegas. Now on that trip I brought with me the new 27mm f1.2 Pro lens by Viltrox which performed exceptionally well especially in low light conditions as you saw earlier in the beginning of this video that I took at the Lost Spirits Distillery. Really cool place, highly recommend it. Now full disclosure, Viltrox sent me this lens out for free to test out and share my opinion with you guys. So without further ado, let's jump into the review. Like other Viltrox lenses, as we unbox it, you'll notice it comes with a protective carry pouch, lens hood, manual, and a warranty card. This is an APS-C lens, so when used on my full-frame Nikon Z7 in DX crop mode, I was effectively shooting at 40.5 millimeters. For size comparison, the Viltrox lens is slightly larger and heavier than my Nikon 50mm 1.8S lens. The lens weighs in a little over a pound, coming in at 560 grams or 19.67 ounces. The lens body feels really robust as it's all metal and it is also weather sealed. As we take a closer look at the lens, it has a USB-C interface for firmware upgrades and you can manually adjust the aperture ring or set it to auto. There is an on-off click button if you would like an audible click sound and feel when rotating your aperture ring. Also on this lens you'll find a programmable FM button which is really nice to have. The lens takes a 67mm filter size and has an aperture range of f1.2 to f16. With 11 rounded aperture blades it produces a decent bokeh, however I did notice the shapes of the lights get more elongated and distorted the closer they are to the edge of the frame. Here are a few sample shots in which you can see some of that distortion. It's not the end of the world, but something to be aware of when shooting at f1.2. When stopped down to around f1.8, the lights towards the edge of the frame become more circular, and it's less of an issue. This lens has a minimum focus distance of 28 centimeters, which is slightly over 11 inches. When shooting wide open, this lens has a lot of vignetting and some lens fringing as well. However, it quickly goes away when stopped down to f2.8 and beyond. As we take a look at some sharpness tests on a brick wall, I was pleasantly surprised to see that this was just as sharp as my other prime lenses when shooting wide open, even towards the edges. When stopped down to f2.8, the corners get even better. Taking a look at an MTF chart, you'll notice this lens was meant to be shot wide open with really sharp results. As the lens gets stopped down to around f8 and beyond, diffraction will start to impact your image quality, so it's best to be avoided. The autofocus on this lens is quiet and very impressive as I was filming in extreme low light situations while shooting wide open. There are times when it may hunt for fast moving subjects, but overall it did a fantastic job. This lens is also great for portraits, however, you'll be closer to your subject which may make some people uncomfortable, so just keep that in mind. Also when shooting on bright sunny days wide open, you'll most likely need to use a neutral density filter to help prevent overexposing your photos. Overall, I had a blast in Las Vegas using this lens for landscapes, portraits, time lapses, and low light video situations. It gave me a lot of versatility, making it a very fun lens to test out. However, there's a caveat with this lens which may be a deal breaker for you. When using this APS-C lens in DX crop mode, it cuts your megapixels down by more than half. So my Z7 is producing a 19.5 megapixel photo, and if I used it on my Z6, it would produce a 10.3 megapixel photo. For most photographers, this will not be an issue, but just something I want to point out. Currently, Nikon mirrorless DX camera bodies are all around 20 megapixels, so using this lens on a Z7, 8, or 9 won't really be much of a difference. 
But if you really want to keep your megapixels and have a similar focal length, then just stick with a 35mm prime lens, which is going to come with a bigger price tag. Now at the time of me making this video, this lens retails for around $545, which is a great price for an f1.2 lens. Viltrox has been doing a fantastic job with these pro lenses, and my only wish is that they would start to come out with some that are meant for full frame cameras, even if it costs a few hundred dollars more. Other than that, thank you Viltrox for allowing me to test out your lenses. I'm going to leave a link down below if you guys are interested in purchasing this lens and supporting this channel. Thanks again for watching. Take care. Bye bye.